better place. We have what it takes to make our world a better place. We are smart at what we do to make our world a better place. We are smart at what we do to make our world Today we are discussing genetics. The subtopic is sex determination in humans. Sex determination in humans. You will recall uh, in, a, in a somatic human cell there are 46 chromosomes. In a normal human cell there are 46 chromosomes. Out of these 46, 44 are known as autosomes. Out of these 46, 44 are called autosomes. Autosomes because they carry genes that determine other characteristics apart from sex. Now, the remaining two are called sex chromosomes. The remaining two are known as sex chromosomes. Now, sex chromosomes carry the gene that determines sex. Sex chromosomes carry the gene that determines sex. Now, uh, in male, or a male has two sex chromosomes which are not similar. Male have X chromosome and Y chromosome. So a male has an X chromosome and has a Y chromosome. The female, females have two X chromosomes, which are, these two are similar. Therefore, when a male forms gametes, some gametes have X chromosome, other gametes have Y chromosome. So a male can form two different gametes. One is X, the other one is Y. Therefore, males are known as heterogametic. The males are said to be heterogametic. But females form uh, gametes which have only X chromosomes. That means a female gametes are, have similar sex chromosomes. Therefore, they are called homo. Gametic, homo gametic. So a male carries X and Y chromosomes. These are the two, gene, two chromosomes that determine sex. That carry genes that determine sex. The females carry X chromosomes. These are the genes that determine uh, sex. I'm saying males are heterogametic, females are. Uh, Homo gametic. The X chromosomes carry the gene for sex. It also carries the genes that determine other characteristics. Similar thing to Y chromosome. Carries the gene for sex, then also carries the gene that determines other characteristics. But chromosome Y has very few genes. It's actually known as said to be genetically empty because it carries very few genes. Now, uh, I want us to look at what is the probability of a male or a female child in a family. In a family of a 
one male, one female. What is the probability of a male child or a female child in a family? So we'll do this. We start with parental phenotype. Uh, we have the male and we have the female. Then parental genotype. We have the male has X, Y, the female has X. Then cross them. They will form gametes. The male is heterogametic, means they will form two different gametes. The males, not the males, the females are homogametic. Make sure the samples are complete. Then let's cross. This gamete can fuse with that gamete to form that is a female. This gamete can cross with that gamete to form a female. This gamete can fuse with that gamete to form a male. This gamete can fuse with that gamete a male. And right fusion there because they're fusing the bits. These are parental, uh, sorry, these are uh, F1 phenotype, F1 phenotype. These are male, these are female, female, male, male. So therefore, the probability of a female child in any family is there are two females out of the possible four children. You do that, you get a half, right? You can also express probability in terms of percentages. Two out of four times the hundred. That gives you 50%. So in a family, the probability of a male child and a female child is equal. That is, both have a 50% chance of being born. But practically, you will find in a family there are more males, children, or more female children. Those are things we shall discuss in the next lesson. Why is it possible that though the community is 50%, some families are more boys or more girls? Thank you for listening. I wish I leave up in the next one.